yourself to be special? Why not? Hmm. I've seen plenty of chrome jocks go psycho over the years. Some metal's simply not meant to mix with meat. The organic body, your soul, gets pushed to the edge, teeters on the brink. And it always ends one of two ways. You either lose yourself forever, or die. No in between. We generally love a story with happy ending. Now you're worlds apart. In what way? I'm gonna take you there myself, fly you to the moon. That's a promise. An unlikely outcome that defies all the odds. <sighs> Got this feeling. Think you and I'd make a pretty good team. I think so too. However, this is not one of those stories. Night City, a neon-drenched concrete jungle where dreams are destroyed, an intoxicating beauty that grinds people's hopes into dust. It is a violent, gritty, and a dark dystopia that is brutal to its core. Where people's lives are disposable, every skin and flesh is replaced by chrome and technology, where people live fast and they die young. This world is extremely messed up. However, in this brutal, cold-hearted world, Relationships are born, bonds are formed, and love blooms. These relationships fight against their fate. They struggle against every single thing that this world throws at them. And their struggle brings them closer. In this anime, Trigger delivered the emotions that I was looking for. But it broke me. It broke us all. Night City broke us all. Night City is not just a setting. It is the villain of the story. It is brutal and unforgiving. It consumes people's freedom and dreams and shatters their lives. For Lucy, it was a trap and her goal was to escape to the moon. For David, this city made him go rogue. Cyberpunk Edge Runner is a perfect example of how a setting can write its own characters. On the surface, it's a story set in a brutal dystopian world full of flashy cyberware and high octane action. But what caught us off guard and what made us cry was a story about dreams, a story about love. In this messed up brutal world, there was a moment of peace and love. There was a feeling of something positive in a world that is under constant threat. A moment of relationship development in a hostile city that the viewers wanted for these characters. But in the end, the Night City ended it all. That hurts. So here is how that love story was developed. It starts off with David. David is a school kid who does not have any ambitions. His mom worked hard so he could get into the corporate lifestyle and make a name for himself by working at Arasaka. But then the city shows its true character. While on a ride home, they get caught in a crossfire. They survive, but David's mom is now in a critical condition. And since they don't have a premium membership for the healthcare, the docs did not treat her when her condition got worse. And unfortunately, she died. Then he got no support, he has to pay bills, and on top of that, he was getting bullied. So after having enough, David decides to chrome the fuck up, and then one day, he meets Lucy. Lucy initially tricks him and lures him into a trap, but as a result, he ends up joining the cyberpunks. The city consumed him in its shadows after the death of his mother, but then he found people who understood him. He was initially betrayed by Lucy, but as they spent more time together, they opened up to each other, and then they start dating. Now, David does not have any dreams, he is living in other people's desire. At first, he was following his mother's desire to get to the top of the Arasaka. Then he tried to follow Maine's desire to make a name for himself. And then he wanted to help Lucy achieve her dreams of going to the moon. Lucy here is opposite of him. She has dreams. Her dream was to go to the moon and she also encouraged David to have dreams of his own. And since David did not have any dreams of his own, he ended up living to make her dream a reality. And Lucy kept on trying to protect David from all the threats that were coming after him. The chemistry wasn't really there, and at one point, they also broke up. But this show still managed to make us cry 
with the impact of their relationship. What makes viewers feel for their relationship is the moments they share. Both are living in a brutal world where things go wrong. They are living on the edge every single day. In that world, they become closer and start a relationship and love blooms. Now on top of that, add the most emotion provoking element, the soundtrack. It makes you feel what it's like to fall for someone and enjoy those moments in a relationship and feel that euphoria that comes from loving someone. They are living their individual lives, but at the same time, they are getting closer. The soundtrack enhances the feeling of connection. The combination of well-written character in a gritty world, sharing a love story which is rare, makes us happy for them. So when these moments of relationships are taken away after giving us the satisfaction and happiness, it breaks us. If you remember the ending, they both achieved their dreams. David was at the top of Arasaka, and Lucy was at the moon, but they both were alone. We all cried listening to the I Wanna Stay At Your House soundtrack. Now it is not just David and Lucy, but other characters as well. Main acts like an older brother or a mentor who takes care of the crew and guides them during the mission. Rebecca has a funny and carefree personality, but at the same time shows a great caring side. And other crew members have traits that make you care for them. As the show progresses, we get to know them better and we get attached to them. And this show does an amazing job of making us feel for them. David, Main, Lucy, Falco, Rebecca, Kiwi, Faraday, and that weird doc. They all have interesting personalities. So here it is, extremely well-written characters that you can get attached to in a setting that is dark and grim. Yeah, you are going to cry at one point because you know an inevitable thing is going to happen. But now throw in strong emotions like love in them. Yeah, you're gonna cry a lot. We wanted to boot up Cyberpunk 2077 just to kill that one asshole, that one who took this feeling of happiness away from us. Adam Smasher. Who the fuck are you? You fucking merc, do your job! We all knew from the beginning that the setting is harsh and the world is brutal. We knew what was going to happen from the beginning. And Cyberpunk Edge Runners does not shy away from showing us the price of survival you pay in the Night City. But what makes it so painful is that we grow to like these characters so much, supporting them in their struggles in the society, cheering them on and hoping to see a moment of positivity in their lives because they are struggling so much. But in the end, it all comes crushing down. We cry because we see their struggle, their desperate hope, their fight against a world that is rigged against them, all for a better ending or some sort of satisfaction at the end. But in the end, the city always wins. But having a contrast of this well-built, suffering world and having some sort of a positivity in it, it kind of works. Now, David and Lucy does not have a perfect relationship, but the moments they share and the soundtrack that they use in the moment is just phenomenal. I hope they come up with a season two and tell a story about some other characters, but until then, we will just have to wait. Now, thank you very much for watching this video until the very end. It means a lot to me. If you would like to check out some other videos, here they are on the screen and I'll see you on the next one.